Okay, so this video is going to be um, a rudimentary look at a performance PA in your club, in your, uh, you know, in your uh, high school garage performance, or you know, or your university uh, beer fest uh, stage rig, or something like that. And it's going to have a few key elements. And if you're, if you can understand what they are, then you can start to learn what they do and you can start to learn how the sound guy is working, what he's doing for you, and you can start to hear all these things that are going to make you sound better, okay? So the first thing is you've got your microphones, okay? Everyone's got their microphone on stage, and they go into a uh, mixer, and we'll, we'll do a little look at a mixer when we get into the rehearsal space, okay? But what the mixer does is puts all these different microphone inputs together, into one mix. Now there's going uh, one mix by mix I mean a uh, one grouping so that all those different mics are going to come out these one sets of speakers, okay? Right? Now there's actually two separate mixes. One's called the front of house. They call it front of house because it comes out the front of the house. It's very deep. <laughs> deep. And the other is called foldback or monitoring systems and that's the mix it's called the monitoring mix or the fold back mix and they call it fold back because the sound is folding back on you and this was only invented like in the early 70s you, you just can't believe that like the Beatles played Shea Stadium with no friggin sound pointing back at them they didn't hear a thing and that's actually why they quit playing live because they couldn't hear themselves and just girls were screaming and they were just like in the end John Lennon's just playing the wrong chords and sticking his arm on the harmonium real, just, just like he's just about put his ass on it you know because he's like, hey, what are we doing? Nobody cares. Nobody can hear ourselves. Um, so, two mixes, right? You've got your monitor mix. So when you get on stage, you're going to say to the sound man, uh, I'd like you to help us with our mix. In our foldback mix, we need to hear everyone who's in the band on stage, right? Okay, so... With your sound check, you'd be like, dun, 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 dun. oh, I can't hear mm, enough of the keyboard or the guitar or the voice, the vocals. So what he'll do is he'll turn those things up and down in the monitor mix until you can miraculously hear everybody on stage. And that's the whole point. And that's going to help co you compensate for all your uh, volume level differences and particularly if you're a drummer, these things are essential because more often than not everyone sets their amplifiers pointing somewhere that's not close to the drummer and you'll be surprised. You know, try it. Go around and listen to what the drummer hears. He doesn't hear anything. All he hears is sound bouncing off the friggin' back wall of the, of the club or the performance space and uh, it's got a time delay. You try keeping time with that. It's like... <coughs> It's like trying to delay your body to actually get into rhythm. Like, it's ridiculous. So these poor drummers, you know, don't know what the hell they're listening to unless they get a good monitor mix. And, you know, so this is why drummers will say, I want a, I want a huge drum monitor right by my head so that I can hear everything in real time. It hasn't, hasn't got a delay on it, okay? So we're looking at a PA, I'm trying to stay focused here. So we've got our monitor mix and then our front of house mix which is the mix coming out of the front of the speakers. Now, what's really interesting about that in a live performance is it's actually a mixture of all the sound that's being generated on stage, bounced around the room, and the fallback monitors you're hearing comes at you, goes into your microphones, bounces around the room. Blah, blah, blah. This is why it's so hard to get a good, clear, crisp sound in some places, right? And this is why it's essential to have a good sound guy. He's going to take that sound the bouncy around crazy sound and add little bits to parts of it in the front of house to clarify the whole thing and to make the whole thing sing and you know more often than not like in some clubs you'll have vocals and kick drum and that's uh, that's that big drum on the on the you know on the drummers the kick drum like half the time that's the main sound that's actually coming through the front of house. You, you wouldn't believe it. But that's, that's the only thing that will help clarify the whole mix, you know. So sometimes the, 
the job of a, a sound guy is to be an alchemist, you know what I mean? To kind of go, well, I put a little bit of this in it. And it, by itself, it sounds really strange and weird. And, you know, sometimes you can give the sound guy a request to say, can you record the band? And he'll either do it by recording the front of house mix or he can put up uh, microphones that will sound, listen to the overall sound in the room, depending on whether it's a good... Uh, you know, a good room for, like, more often than not, the live recordings are going to sound really bad because they're inside a room and you just get a lot of reverb and it just sounds really unfocused and loud and not very defined. Or you can get these front of house mixes which often sound really strange because you'll get a really loud vocal, a really loud kick drum, but there won't be any snare drum in the mix and there'll be no guitars in the mix or something like this. So you'd be like, oh my God, if we sounded like this, that would be really strange. But it's not the case because he's using the front of house mix to accentuate everything that's coming off the stage. Um, and this is why, you know, it's really essential to have a good sound guy because he's got to try and make sense of this total chaos and make it sing. You know what I mean? And the other thing that you'll discover about live sound is that with a good front of house PA, you need to accentuate what we call the bottom end which is the frequency range when we look at graphic EQs, I'll show you. But it's uh, around, you know, 50 kilohertz up to about 200 kilohertz. And that's that really huge driving bottom end low frequency. And you'll discover if you've got a good sound guy, he's going to have a huge bottom end. And most of those frequencies are only really coming from the kick drum, um, the, the toms, which, uh, you know, aren't usually necessarily pivotal because they're not constant and regular. And then a bit of bass guitar. But uh, it's astonishing how your, your front of house mix will change if you've got a good bottom end because you, you can liken to building a harmonic pyramid of sound on top of these rock solid elements. And they're going to usually more often than not they'll really compress the kick drum so that it's kind of this constant focused pounding consistent beat and so you so if you've got that huge and pumping through your front of house speakers then all of a sudden it brings into relief everything else that you're doing on stage and all of a sudden everyone just wants to get up and dance and I actually uh, you know some of the stuff I've done as a sound guy has been kind of a joke I, I, I tell uh, I tell my wife here look I'm gonna make people dance now and she'll be like well how are you gonna do that and all I do is go over to the equalizer and bump up a couple of frequencies and then all of a sudden everyone stands up to dance. Because there's these levels of vibratory frequency that are down the bottom. In The, the Grateful Dead actually used to m say that their bass player would say uh, he, he would drop the bomb. That's what they called it because right down that thing it would just be like you know and everyone knows the fun of going to like a dance club or a good rock gig or something where there's huge vibrating bottom end that it almost shakes everything like that's the that's the vibratory frequency that you build your live sound on right so you've got these gigantic loping energy waves of sound pressure going like this and then all of a sudden your music makes more sense because their harmonic ranges and variances built on that huge throbbing bottom end that's a long loping wave of energy instead of just being these kind of tinny kind of or buzzy sounds or something like that and this is where um, if we could talk about heavy music for for a moment there's a few essential frequencies that you you must have in there and if you don't you're gonna be so horribly annoying that no one will want to listen to you. And uh, the bottom end is essential. And we'll talk about heavy guitar f frequency mapping a little bit. But um, this is really about front of house and monitoring and talking about public address systems and having a sound guy. If you're going to do heavy music, you have to have a sound guy that can pump your bottom end for you. Because otherwise, you're just going to sound like a bunch of screaming, buzzing bees. But if you have it in relief of this, Boom, 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 boom. Huge, do, 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 chunking, monolithic kind of uh, frequency range. Then everything else kind of makes a little more sense instead of just being. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this video 
is about explaining a rudimentary version of uh, your public address system, okay? So if you learn about monitors or foldback mixes, which is what you get on stage from the sound guy when you do your sound check, that helps everyone to learn, um, not to learn, I mean everyone to hear themselves and hear everyone else, which is essential when you play on stage, right? And then learning about the front of house, which is the speakers pointing out the front and the sound guy who's out on the soundboard, usually in the middle of the room. So he's in a perfect position to listen to the whole thing and make sense of it. And he's on his mixing board, okay? And we'll talk about all the other things. Uh, you know, it gets pretty complex if you want it to, but it doesn't have to. Because if you know these really simple essentials, then you get someone else to do the job that knows how to, and he's going to make you sound great and look great. Yay! Ha, 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 ha.